Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just sitting here after a long day of excavation, and uh, I got thinking about a conversation that I had with a visitor today. It's a public archaeology site. We give visitors dozens and dozens of them every day, and we, sometimes they bring up fascinating, interesting points and raise great questions that I hadn't thought about for quite a while. And this happened earlier this week when uh, two older women came by the site and visited with us. And after having about a 45 minute conversation with this woman, she admitted to me that she was 99 years old and had come out to the site, which is pretty incredible. What an amazing woman. That's sort of besides the point. The fact that I wanted to talk about was a question that she had. She noticed that at the Whitfield House at this site, in our profile, we have this very thick layer of soil at the top that we call the historic fill layer. And it's uh, all of the artifacts since the 1630s uh, that have uh, that have have occurred all of the people living out here in this north yard and spending time and cooking and cleaning and fixing clothes and uh, and eating and doing all sorts of activities uh, has has built up the earth and so now we have we have thousands of artifacts and uh, and the soil that surrounds them and so she asked me so does that mean the earth is sort of growing here and that really made me think it had made me sort of have some thoughts about the science of taphonomy now if you want to hear about taphonomy in maybe a more fun and engaging way you could check out there's a probably a thingy doodly deeps up in here somewhere that is a link to a video i did on this using the video game uncharted as a an avenue to discussing taphonomy but maybe you're not into video games maybe you think the uncharted games aren't all that great or all that interesting, and you just want to hear it straight. So I'll do that using this site, the Henry Whitfield House, as an example. So she was really asking about site formation processes and uh, a little bit of theory method that I could throw your way, an idea that comes from an archeologist named Michael Schiffer. Uh, and these are two ways that we can think about how archeological sites are altered after they're laid down in the ground. And the terms that Schiffer used were C transforms and N transforms. So we'll get into that in just a second. Here at the Whitfield House, we have a depositional environment, meaning that in the last several hundred years, something like 30, 40, 50 centimeters of earth have built up. And in fact, the house itself built in 1639, a good chunk of it is buried underneath the ground. The foundation is actually buried that same depth. And that deposition is anthropogenic, meaning that it's done by people. It's basically caused by people being in this north yard, dropping garbage, leaving things on the ground, and dust to dust, ashes to ashes, all of that stuff becomes earth and raises the level of the ground. And of course, that soil is densely filled with artifacts, all of the stuff that didn't turn into soil. And that's essentially what we spend our time studying out here at the Whitfield House. Process is what Schiffer would have called a C transform. And a C transform stands for cultural transform. And that is any alterations to the site that occur as a, a, a process of uh, human interaction, things that humans do. So that can be part of the site itself, but it can also be things that disturb or uh, that interfere with the site that we maybe wouldn't think of as a part of the cultural material of the site. So for instance, if somebody had dug a trench right through this yard to put an electrical wire in, in the 1980s, that would be a C transform. It would significantly alter the site uh, and thus how we have to approach the site and how we understand the stratigraphy and how we understand where the artifacts came from and how they may have been displaced by that process, right? We also have, on the other uh, angle from that, N transforms, which stands for natural transforms. And these are uh, alterations that occur to the site uh, because of non-anthropogenic factors, non-human factors. So if a tree grows through your site and the roots push things around, if a rodent digs a burrow through your site, if earthworms move soil up and down, uh, which they do very effectively actually, uh, or anything like that, uh, uh, frost heaves, all of those are end transforms and they can significantly alter the structure of the site underneath the ground. So again, the science of this, the study of this is called taphonomy and we try to understand taphonomic principles in archaeology uh, as a, uh, it really foregrounds everything we do. And I say this to my students when we're out in the field every summer, archaeologists actually spend probably 75, 80% of their time in the field rendering and thinking about taphonomy before we can even get to thinking about culture and material culture and what this stuff actually means. Because if we don't understand where the artifacts are in relation to one another, how they got there, how they were uh, formed, how the site was formed, how the features were formed, uh, and, and how the site might have been disturbed and altered and changed over the X number of hundreds or thousands of years since the site was quote unquote abandoned, somebody walked away from it and left material culture on the ground, 
And all those years have passed, uh, and and we need to deeply understand uh, the changes that have happened at that site in between. Otherwise, we can't understand the spatial or the temporal relationships between artifacts, and that's the whole ball game, right? That's context. That is how we discern spatial patterning and uh, and human behavior in the past, and ultimately how we get to human culture in the past, and how we actually answer the sorts of social questions we want to ask as archaeologists. So again, inspired by uh, a discussion with a, a, a quite incredible 99-year-old woman who asked me a lot of great questions, but one of them made me reckon again for the first time in quite a while uh, the, the the nature of taphonomy at this site uh, in a serious way and I just thought I'd you know share that with you a little bit uh, as a little quick a little quick lesson in some intro basic archaeology stuff so again uh, check out the video uh, about uncharted if you want to hear more about this I also talked about the process of preservation in there which is in my opinion sort of the other side of the coin of taphonomy those two if you understand taphonomy and preservation you basically can understand how an archaeological site is formed and how we get the artifacts that we do when we excavate. So check that video out if you're interested. Uh, and also, you know, like, subscribe, comment, let me know, uh, uh, you know, what you think about these issues. And um, hang around for more. Thanks, everybody.